fingertips back to stars with us here in the studio this afternoon and we have set them our lovely fingertips make and do today now all we want you to do guys is a special make and do is design an all-star for the front of your dressing room and while you're doing that we're gonna watch fingertips fingertips you could ever want to make and do right, right to your fingertips. fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And let's check out what's coming up on today's show. In Food Fingertips, find out how spaghetti and creamy mash can become an edible hedgehog. Find out what you can make from a piece of card and a sheet of lined paper in under a minute. And in Fun Fingertips, we show you how to make your own froggy set of croquet. And for all the details on today's makes, you can video the show and play it back later. Look at our website or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. Five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Rocket pad is go. Wow. Well, that seemed to go very well. Steve, which way did it go? Well, it seems to have landed over here. Look. Hang on a second, there's a message too, Fern. Let's see what it says. It says, congratulations on a successful launch. Your mission is to construct another fingertips rocket pad. No problem. Notepads are really useful, and this one is brilliant because of its special tearing device. And it looks really fantastic as well. Now, if you'd like to make it, you need to get yourself a till roll. You can get these from most stationery shops. And you also need to find a box that your till roll will fit into perfectly just like this one does once you've found that perfect box you need to do some careful measuring first of all measure the side of the base of your box this one is about eight centimeters and then using this measurement you want to make a mark from the bottom of your box upwards so one this side and this side and then join these dots together and do this all the way around each side of your box then using that measurement again you want to make another two marks above this here and here and draw a line joining those together now once you've got to this stage you need to mark another one centimeter above each line so on the front and on both sides then you need to cut down the seams like this so you end up with some flappy bits just cut down to that first line that you've drawn there because right now we're making the box that your tea roll fits snugly into now you need to snip down the side bits so you want to snip first of all along your top line on the side here so just snip all the way along there because these are going to be your folding flaps to make your box stay together and also just cut along the front here another flap there to be folded in and the same on this side too and once you've done all your cutting and snipping all you need to do is fold the box into shape so push the side bits down and this bit should fold nicely into there and we've got a great fingertips top tip to make the rocket's backing. What you do is you draw half the rocket shape onto a bit of newspaper and then cut this out so you will now have one perfect rocket template. Now, use this to just check that it's the right size for the box that you're going to use. And when you're happy, use the template to cut out the same shape out of strong card and then you can decorate it however you like now we've gone for different color boosters also with a uh, added rivets in black pen to make it look more realistic and even a porthole window made out of tin foil now we're going to make the paper tearing device and for this you need a strip of card which is about one and a half centimeters wide now to attach it you're going to use paper fasteners so first get a ball of modeling clay and a pencil and make a small hole either side of your rocket like that and then push your paper fastener through both sheets of uh, card and fold it over at the back making sure that you've left a big enough gap so that your till roll can still fit through the center then you can stick this to your backboard so position it and stick it in place and then you can trim off any excess bits of card here and the top of the box as well and now it's time for the added touches so how about a big flame at the front of the box 
just there. And of course, if there's fire, then there's got to be smoke. So, some puffs of smoke at the side of your box. And how about a big plume of smoke at the very back, just there. And then you're ready to stick it on the wall with some sticky tack and you're ready for lift off. The only other thing you need to add, don't forget, is your till roll in your box, like that. Then you're ready to take down any messages, telephone numbers and notes. And then you can just rip them off as easy as that. Now, if you'd like to make the fabulous Fingertips Rocket Pad Notepad, then you could check out our Fingertips website. Just click on Top Makes and you'll find all the details. We'll give you the address at the end of the show. You could watch back your video if you've taped today's show, or if not, grab a pen and paper, because here is a recap. Find a box that is wide enough for your till roll. Carefully measure and mark the base and the sides, and then cut along the lines. Then fold it into a little box that fits your till roll snugly. Make a rocket-shaped template out of paper and make sure it fits against your backboard before cutting it out in card. Add a silver foil porthole and draw on plenty of rivets and screws. Make a card pair-off strip and fasten to the top of your rocket and add extra detail like flames and smoke. And then you have liftoff! And if rockets are not your thing, check this one out. How about a football boot complete with shin pad, laces and mat pins for studs. Uh, be careful though, if you are going to do this one, don't stick the mat pins in your till roll. You could make a house for your notepad to trail down, complete with a drain pipe made from bendy straws and a little front door. Hey Fern, I think I've got another message. What's it say? Let's have a look. Mission accomplished, well done. Why, thank you very much. Love hedgehog. So do I. Their little noses and beady eyes. Oh, they're so cute. And delicious. Yeah, there's nothing better on a cold day than a nice hot hedgehog with a tasty filling. Yep, this is Food Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you something that's fun to make and great to taste. And this hot hedgehog is made from creamy mashed potato, spaghetti, and brilliant bangers. It's so easy to make. And it's a merely one. Now, first you need to start off with some mashed potato. We're not going to give you the amounts just yet. It's up to you how big or small your hedgehog's going to be. So we have the baking tray there, Steve. There we go. Because you want to put about a third of your mashed potato onto your baking tray. Just plop it straight into the middle there. And then you want to make it into an oval shape, just like our hedgehog you can see there. So just use a fork to shape it. Now, you could use instant mashed potato, but we think if you use real potatoes, it does taste a lot nicer and it's cheaper too. So let's just give them a nice little nose shape at the front there as well. Then, with the back of a spoon, you want to make a well in the hedgehog like that. So just push out all of the mashed potato around there. And into the well, you want to add some tinned spaghetti. Mm -mm. Now, you don't want to put in too much, just enough so that it doesn't go over the sides. And drain off most of the liquid. This way, it won't be too runny. And that way, you will not get a soggy hoggy. Too right. Now, you need to get the rest of your mashed potato and start building up the sides of your hedgehog, keeping that nice oval shape and covering up all of your spaghetti. Now, to make the hedgehog's face, use cherry tomatoes, chop them in half, and this will be for the eyes and also the nose. And if you're going to make a little hedgehog, how about using peas instead? And using a fork, you just want to fluff up your mashed potato like this to make your hedgehog nice and spiky. And now it's time to add the face. So here we go, Fern. You're going to do an eye? Yeah. All right, so let's pop one. There and there. <laughs> oh. and one the other way for the nose. Look how sweet he looks. And for the legs, of course, we're going to be using sausages. Now, don't worry, I've made them vegetarian oh, sausages. Just that's good. Lovely. Are. So one either side and at the back as well. And there you have it. One lovely little hedgehog ready for the oven. Now, pop him in on gas mark 480 degrees Celsius for about 25 minutes or until the spikes brown nicely. And then it will look like this. And you could try adding cheese to your mashed potato to make a cheesy hedgehog. Or for an extra spiky one, add some savoury sticks after it's baked. And you could try using different fillings like 
baked beans instead of spaghetti. Mm. Oh, <laughs> delicious, nutritious food fingertips hedgehogs. Not to be mistaken with the real thing. Tell you what, that looks lovely. Minute. Because this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something in under a minute using bits and pieces you can find around your house. Today it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to time. And this is all it takes, just that, nothing more. OK, are you ready? Very ready. Now, we're not going to tell you what it is, as always. You're going to have to try and guess as Fern makes. Good uh, luck. OK, here Three, goes. two, one, go, go, go! OK, piece of card, fold in half this way. Then, this piece of lined paper, Fold that away. Oh, ten seconds have okay. gone and all is not well. It is. It's all okay. Don't you worry. I need to have a bit of concentration here, Stephen, if you wouldn't mind. I okay. need to start counting. No problem. Okay, one. Two. <laughs> no. Okay, twenty four. seconds have just gone. <laughs> Three. Keep it. Are you counting? Four. Do you need silence? Five. I'm ignoring you. Eighteen. Twenty-seven. Twenty-six. Fifty-four. Uh, Thirty seconds have gone. Seven. I thought that was the eighth one. Eight. Okay. I'm Thirty-five eight. seconds Nine. have gone. I hope I'm on. You're doing Ten. well. And stop the clock now. Thank you very much. Oh, thirty-nine seconds. But do you know what it is? Well, let's tell you. It is a flat pack CD rack. Let's unpack. And you do this by pulling out every other. Slit like this. Nearly at the bottom, there we go. Then you need to fold it all along this way so these edges get nice and creased. Then if I open it back out and pop it like that, you can put in your CD. Look How at that. Cool. And check this out. If you have a design on your piece of paper before you start, have a look. It looks like it's 3D. That is very cool. And if you want your CD rack to be even stronger, you can make reinforcers for the corner by getting a square of paper folding it in half one way and then back the other way and when you open it out you'll have a cross shape in the middle and you just want to cut down any of these fold lines into the center point and then if you pop a dab of glue like that on the edge watch this magic bit here look there you have an instant <laughs> corner reinforcer to make it nice and strong. And because it does make your CD rack nice and strong, it also means that you can change the angle of them, like our fingertips version here. And also, you can make it vertical too. So now there's no excuse not to organise your CDs. Because it only takes under a minute, so why not try and beat the clock? Evenings. It's warm, it's light till late, and it's the perfect time for playing croquet. It's a fantastic game. All you need is a mallet, a ball, and frogs. Frogs? That's right, frogs. Yep, we put the croak into croquet because we've come up with a fingertips game that's fun to make and fun to do. It's fingertips croquet. Not only do these frogs look cool, they don't ruin the lawn. In fact, you don't need any grass to play on because these happy go croaky frogs are more than pleased to crouch on any flat surface. Oh, hey. yes! Now, to make sure that all your frog hoops are the same size, it's a good idea to make a froggy template. So, get hold of a crisp pot. You're going to eventually use this to make your mallet, but first of all, you need to draw around it to get a froggy face template. You want to draw around it six times. First, do two circles, one on top of the other, then two bulging eyes overlapping the top circle, and two chubby cheeks side by side of the bottom circle. So, let's just draw around the last one there. Then, you want to just round it off using a pen, just so you get more of a froggy face. So let's just go all the way around, give him some nice chubby cheeks down to his chin. There we go. And then cut this shape out and there you have your frog face. Now, to make the frog legs, you want to first of all get hold of a dinner plate and draw around it, but with just a little bit hanging off the edge like that. Let's draw it all the way around there. Then get hold of a saucer and do the same just below that line. And we go a little bit hanging off the edge again. And on both sides of your hoop, you want to add some little triangles, which are your froggy feet. There we go. Now, cut this shape out and get a dab of glue and put that onto your frog's chin. And there you have one frog. Stephen, 
That's for you. Thank you. Now, you want to draw around this onto a stronger bit of card, and there you have your first frog hoop. Now, you need the frog hoops to stand up, and for that, they need feet. So draw around your saucer and make a slit either side, and let's just cut down the middle. And you also want to make a couple of slits at the bottom of your hoops, just here and here. And this is where your feet will slot in. So that in there, that in there, and now they should stand up. Just like that. Now, you need to make a pair of feet for every hoop you have, and you need six hoops in all to play fingertips croquet. And look, we've decorated our frogs and given them faces. We've added some card eyes and even a little tongue. And we've also numbered our frogs so you can tell which order to play the game in. And for your mallet, just make a hole with a sharp pencil into your crisp pot. Into that, put some garden cane and put some glue around the hole to secure it in place. And, of course, you need a ball to play croquet. Uh, you can use any type of ball you want as long as it fits through your frog hoops. But we've decided to paint up these polystyrene ones. I've got a nice raw gold. Stephen, there's an orange one for you. OK, now, come on, Fernie. That's croquet. The aim of fingertips croquet is to hit the ball through the frogs in order, taking it in turns with your opponent. So, go in order of the numbers on the frogs, start with number one. And the person who hits the ball through frog number six with the least amount of hits is crowned frog princess. Or frog prince, as the case may be. Stephen? Go on. You know that story about the frog, and then the princess kisses the frog, and then the frog turns into a prince? Yep. Well, I wonder if it works the other way. Outside of the big yes and wouldn't you? And next time on Fingertips, never be disorganised again as we show you how to make the totally organised totem. Find out how to make a great game of drafts that's fun to play, good to make, and you can eat it too. And watch out for Hungry Martians in a great fun Fingertips game. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to make anything from the programme, then...